Welcome back to Gale Force Winds Season 2. The Gale Force Winds Podcast is proudly sponsored by Newfound Marketing, a digital marketing agency located in St. John's, Newfoundland. Visit our website at newfoundmarketing.ca to find out how we can help your business grow. Newfound Marketing, a compliment to your marketing team. Well, welcome back to another great conversations on, on Gale Force Winds. And I have to tell you, boy, there's nothing more inspirational than being in conversation with musicians. The amount of creativity that's here in Newfoundland and Labrador is simply impressive. And the potential that these people have to take their product and send it around the globe makes me excited about the possibilities. Kirsten, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Kirsten Rodden Clark, and I am half of the duo Quote the Raven. And uh, we've been playing for about 10 years now. I uh, only started touring about four years ago when we put out our first full length album. Um, but yeah, now that the pandemic has sort of calmed down, we're really excited to just get back on the road and do as many shows as we possibly can. Kirsten, where did you grow up? I grew up in Conception Bay South. Actually, so did Jordan, uh, but we didn't know each other. We went to two different high schools um, and didn't didn't meet each other until after high school. Um, we were in this like choir. There was only like six of us, so more of like a singing ensemble, I guess you would say. But uh, we used to uh, pick the songs and we wanted to sing, create our own harmony sometimes. And one time we sang a duet together. Um, and everyone thought our voices blended really nicely together and that's kind of how we started the band. Now was music a big part of your life growing up when you were younger? It was, it was. I used to actually do lip syncs more so than sing. Okay. Uh, I used to have a really nasally voice. I remember um, people telling me that and that was really sad for me but I used to always want to perform. Uh, I used to yeah, do lip syncs on the street for whoever would come yeah. watch. Yeah, me yeah. and my friends we would just... How old were you then? Uh, I was probably nine, maybe. Wow. Okay, yeah. so I've heard of I've heard of kids setting up lemonade stands. Yeah. I've never heard of a lip, st uh, lip, lip sync. sync stand. We did, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, we what were practice. some of the songs you were lip syncing? Uh, we did anything by like Aqua or Spice Girls, um, S Club Seven, like all of the poppy kid, you know, yeah. groups. Yeah, we did all so that. What kind of, of sound stuff. system did you have while you were doing this? I think it was like, just a little like speaker play, yeah. like it wasn't cd player it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't yeah it wasn't that high tech we uh well you're nine so yeah. right we don't know but but yeah we used to create our own dances and all that kind of stuff and i used to have actually every birthday party i would do the same thing my sister would set up my dad's camera and we would just create a dance and lip sync so so the performance thing was important to you it was it yeah. was yeah i kind of lost it a bit i think i kind of lost my confidence um in elementary so like once i got to school and started growing up um and it didn't really come back to me until i was like out of high school and even now i still feel super awkward i could never i don't think i wish i could but i don't think i could perform like a dance or like that kind of thing anymore but i'm way more confident in my singing and i'm happy that that's where my career has went so uh, high school, were you, you were performing a lot in high school then? We, uh, no, actually, I was in the choir. Right. Um, but any time I had to sing by myself, I would choke. So I was in um, some music lessons, some voice lessons. And every single time we had a recital, I would go up, sing a verse, maybe half a chorus, choke, <laughs> cry, and leave. <laughs> and that was like constant uh, for quite a while. Um, and then once I joined this choir of six people and, and, and kind of started singing with just someone else, like I found that that really, really helped me instead of always being put on the spot. Um, I didn't like everyone looking at me, I think was the, was the weird thing. And even now that's the thing that makes me uncomfortable. It's not the singing part, it's just the, I feel really awkward sometimes. This is fascinating to listen <laughs> to you talk. Like, yeah. I did not expect yeah. you to tell us this. Yeah. A yeah. very successful musician right now, mm -hmm. and you've gone through, and, and I think that's important, Alan, for yeah. like the people that we have watching this. Yeah. Someone going through uh, where they choke, in yeah. your words, yeah. Yeah. and here you are. It's yeah. incredible. Good for you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, th I think I've come a long way. It's taken a long time, um, but but yeah, it's it's completely done like a 180 sort of so so after high school academically did uh, where did you go then uh so i actually took some time off um i really didn't know what i wanted to do i was 
I was always, I always wanted to be a veterinarian. That was like the thing. I was going to be a vet. It's going to be great. Love animals. Um, and I did this veterinarian camp and it completely scared me. What did you do that? <laughs> um, in PEI at yeah. the vet college. Um, it was, it was just really, really hard. And there were certain courses that you had to take in order to become a vet. And I was like, I can't do this. Like dissecting animals and all this stuff. I was like, I can't do it. Um, so that was out. And, uh, and then, you know, we were in this choir and, and Jordan was already singing downtown, uh, like weekly. And he asked me to join him. And that was sort of the beginning of our career. And I never, ever thought that it would go, <laughs> it would go this How far. How long ago so. was that? That was in like 2010, maybe 2011. Ago, yeah. 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 True. True. I'm so, yeah. I'm so stuck on time. Point, I mean, oh, yeah, uh, you're not alone. Everybody with COVID has lost a couple oh of years. Oh my goodness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So even longer than that. So yeah. yeah, it's been a long time now. Right. So off you go to, you went over to PEI. I'm sure you put your hand inside the cow with the hole in the side, <laughs> right? Am I right? Yeah. And so this is not for I me. I did that. You're not yes. alone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah, he lives in PEI, so yeah. he knows a bit oh, about this. Oh, do you? Yeah, yes. my daughter went to vet school too, and yeah. So, oh no way! Oh, well, she went to that program. To that, that you program. Did, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's fantastic. So mm -hmm. okay, so so Jordan is performing downtown, and yes. do you remember the first time you performed together? I don't, but I believe it was definitely at the Levee because okay. we used to play at the Levee, which is not a, a bar anymore. Um, but Gene Brown used to run it and he was so great to us and he would let us play like whenever we wanted, basically. Um, and yeah, we used to we used to play down there, usually to the bartenders because right. it was always a weekday or a time that didn't really make any sense. Um, yeah, we'd get enough money to buy some pizza and then we go home. And that was like for... I'd say the first four years at least. I did actually go to Holland College to do some performing arts. Um, I did a foundation program there. And in the meantime, Jordan uh, was in a rock band. So there was a little bit of time, a few months where I was away, and then I came back and Great continued. program at Holland College. It was really great. I did yeah. it more for the confidence building because mm -hmm. I think um, I was so, uh, st like I had so much stage fright that I thought that that would help me, and I really do think it did. So, yeah. but yeah, it was a great program. You yeah. must have fell in love with PEI. You kept going back. <gasps> I love it so much. If I could live anywhere but here, it would be PEI, I think, Is for sure. Right? Yeah. What about I PEI in Um, I don't know. I think it's it's the landscape. It's like it's very similar in terms of like small town. You know, it's not really big or anything. But I love that the tourism is so big there as well as here. But I don't know. There's just... It, <laughs> I'm not really sure what it is. I, I can't really tell you. Maybe it's because of the experiences that I've made with right. new friends that I met there yeah. that might just have a hold on me, but I, yeah, I really love it. Yeah, a PEI to me, is, it's just a content place to yeah. be. There's a feeling of contentment around you, right? Yes. But I find that in Newfoundland too, by the way. <laughs> exactly. I, I, you're right, I mean, the, the two places are so similar they in are. the way. Although one is very Scottish, one very Irish. They're a little different in that respect. But right. But there is a lot of similarities there, mm -hmm. isn't there, for sure. Just enough difference. Just enough difference, right, <laughs> yeah. to make it somewhere else. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right, of course. Um, so, okay, so you're performing mm -hmm. for pizza. For pizza. So when does it, like, so when do you make this transition for performing for pizza to where you are? Uh, um, I that's th a big jump. It is. It is a yeah. huge jump. I think um, it was probably when we started working with Chris Kirby. Uh, who's originally from here but is living in Nova Scotia now. Um, yeah, Jordan Jordan met him at, I think, a conference one time, and it was really late, and Jordan was just like, we'd love to work with you. And Chris was like, yeah, yeah, sure. And then it didn't really happen. And then we thought, you know, he's the perfect guy to, to make this album with. We have to reach out again. And he was all for it. He was like, come over to East Lawrencetown. Um, I that? would East Lawrencetown, Nova Scotia. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And he said, you know, like, come on over. And then he had the big idea of setting up this writing camp for us because we had only written. Jordan Jordan was mostly the writer. I, I write a little bit. I still don't consider myself a songwriter. Really? <laughs> I've gotten a lot better. But it's mostly Jordan. So, um, you know, Chris was like, let's have this writing camp. I'll invite all these um, great East Coast writers and we'll just write for four days and see what happens. So... There was nine of us, and we wrote, I think it was like 14 or 15 songs within that time. We wow. would like break off into groups. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of art created that weekend. Um, and then we recorded for like a, like a week after that. 
uh, and then came home and, and he kind of added some instruments and different things while we were home and we were just back and forth kind of thing. And that, that was sort of the beginning. We met a lot of people through Chris. He's been amazing for us like in our career and, and it's just kind of continued steadily, I think, since then. It's, uh, it's very interesting how sometimes the right people enter your life at the right moment, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about that writing process that you went through with those nine other people. That must have been just so much creativity. It, it was, and we really didn't know anyone. I think the only person that we knew was Stephen Green, who's also from here. Um, so it was also like that introduction thing and then kind of being out of your element a little bit, not being used to co-writing. But that excitement as well, I think, kind of drove the weekend and probably made it so creative for all of us. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It was just, it was just so, many, so many talented people in one room. Um, so you're physically in a in a location and we were just in his Lawrence house sound in a yeah. house yeah sitting around mm -hmm. and we would like break off into different groups of and people you, so talk, to walk me through that because it's fascinating it so, is yeah so like you'd come up with a theme or a topic how would all yep. that play out yep um sometimes it was like different so we write different ways depending so when i write with jordan jordan will just start strumming that's usually how it starts or um, and start creating a story around, you know, what he's feeling or, or something like that. Um, but there's been other times where he's seen something or something has affected him. And so he writes about a specific, you know, something that happened to him. But that weekend, I, I honestly, it's such a whirlwind. I was so, again, I was so nervous. Like it was another thing of me just feeling out of my element that I feel like I have sort of blocked out exactly how it happened but all I know was it was really successful and we had the most fun I know like a parrot writ wrote one of our songs I don't know if you knew that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um, Victoria and Chris have this parrot and um, one night the shingles had blown off the roof it was like a horrible storm and the power went out you sure you weren't in Newfoundland I know I was like I thought we left this <laughs> weather behind us but no <laughs> it, f it followed us um and we all sat around, it was like six of us that night, we all sat around by candlelight and just drank some wine and started writing Golden Hour, which ended up being the title track of the album. And in the mix of writing, we were, we were at this line and we were like, okay, you know, what works with this? And, and Monty the parrot was like, play Freebird. And they taught him to say that because they thought it was so funny that he would say Freebird. He's in a cage, God love. <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> um, it, 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 it rhymed so well with the line before, and we were we just all started laughing. Okay. We, we were like, "This has to go in this this song." So how many people know that story? We try to tell it often at right. the at the shows because we just think it's it's just the funniest thing. But Monty's like my best friend. I have his feather in my phone. He's like the awesome. Yeah, we're like, how do we give him songwriting credits? <laughs> we're gonna have to like bring him treats all the time, pay him in food, or I don't know. <laughs> Pick them up when I go great there. Story. We've heard a lot of stories. I've heard a lot of stories. That's way up there. way up there. Yeah. Freebird. He's really cute. Yeah, I guess. play Freebird, yeah. Oh, uh, so, so, uh, so that's great. So you, you come out of that experience, and mm -hmm. now you're ready to go to the album. So t tell me about how that journey takes place. It's one thing to write a song, but yeah. how do you go from there to, to where you want to do an album? It's a lot. Uh, I don't think people realize like how much work goes into it, and it's not just us; it's everyone. Um, so once the producing is finished, you know, it has to go to someone, a mixing engineer, make sure all the levels, the vocals are loud enough, whatever, whatever you want to stand out in the songs, um, and then it goes to a mastering engineer. Uh, who just makes sure it's on level with everything else that's on the radio and matches with everything. Uh, and then it's like packaging, which I, it, it costs so much money. <laughs> that's the other thing I don't think people realize. It's like, it's, it's a huge investment to make right. an album um, besides just creating the songs. Um, but yeah, it just goes into production. You get the, the physical album and then you're, you're at the point where you have to try to promote it. Right. How involved you know. are you in the business side of things? In the business side of things, Jordan is definitely the um, the brains. <laughs> he is the business the businessman. I try to have even especially now like more input because there's so much more happening yeah. and there's so much more on our plate and it's just you know too much for one person. Um, so I try my best to be to be on it, but he he just knows. I don't know how. I don't know if he just picks it up on the way but he just knows what to do he's he's been a, like the main 
piece of our of our band you know it would not be the same without Jordan for sure probably the passion for what he's doing makes mm. all those other things easy to do and it seems yes. like he knows what he's doing right he does he does yes what you do so how involved like I'm, i want to go back to like you just mentioned a whole bunch of things yeah you know, like did, engineer this engineer, uh, right yeah how involved are you in all of that process are you um, so for the, for the first album, when we, so we got Scott Hammond to mix the album. Um, and he's from Newfoundland. He's from Newfoundland. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we actually did go to his house and, and we're there when he was mixing things or would, would give our input and stuff. But normally I don't think that's how it happens. Normally the mixing engineer would just do it on his own. And if you had notes, you know, you can give them notes and stuff like that, but it's usually there. Their so thing, I'm yeah. gonna ask a kind of a geeky question. <laughs> okay, I hope I know the, the answer. Are the is your singing separate from Jordan's playing, uh, or did you do it together and then you bring it to this guy Scott? Uh, like just how does it work? Yeah, because you yeah. know doing a podcast is similar mm -hmm. yeah, to what you do and uh, trying to make sure the levels and all that. I'm fascinated. I want to bore <laughs> all the people watching, but. There's probably some interest in that. Yeah, no. Um, so actually, so I'll just go back a little bit. When yeah. we made Misty Mountains, which was our EP that we recorded um, with, oh my goodness, Robert. Why can't I remember Robert's last name? He's from here. Wait, you get our age. This is ridiculous. He's <laughs> going to be so upset with me right now. Anyways, we, we sat down and recorded the whole thing live off the floor. So it was just two vocals and a guitar, and we just recorded it. And then anything that we wanted to add afterwards was added alone. And you recorded it onto what? <laughs> Geeking out a little okay. bit. Okay, um, there's like different programs. There's oh, okay. um, Into a computer. Into a computer, yeah. Which yeah. is fascinating. Yes. The music industry has certainly changed. You know, 20 mm -hmm. years yeah. ago, I guess people weren't doing that, but now you can put a microphone into a computer and, and record it. Record it. And make it acceptable quality audio. Yes, right? and there's like, there's filters and I mean, you can make, like for your voice, you can, you can pitch correct it if that's what you want to do. Um, I would need a lot of that. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what? Like most artists are not completely perfectly on pitch all the time and you might get a really good take and there's just that one little thing and you just want to bump it a little bit. We've never like pitch corrected like some people do and that's totally fine if that's what you want to do. Um, but it is sometimes a necessary thing to use. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, normally the instruments are recorded on their own but we did the, so we did the first EP like that live off the floor and then the second uh, the full length that we did with Chris um, yeah it was it was separate it was you know he would sing normally first because he sings the melody line and then I would do the harmonies on top of that um, and sometimes we'd have to go back and forth because sometimes I do sing the melody on a verse so it was interesting in that regard and then and then yeah, and then just add everything kind of after that. Well, so, sorry, the guitar goes first because you need some kind yeah. of layer to sing on. But uh, and then our second one that we just put out, "Can't Hold the Light," that was a bit different again. Chris wanted um, some of the songs to be sung at the same time because he thought that the feel of it would be more real. It would be more like the live show if we sang it together. So he would set up two vocal mics, um, kind of back to back make sure they're isolated so that Jordan's very loud. I don't um, carry as far as he does. So he would have to make sure the, the vocal mics were, were isolated and then we'd sing. So, okay, so you, you go through this whole process now you're, you're given something. What do, you, yes. what do you have in your hand? A digital file <laughs> or what? Yeah, and it's all files on go, the computer. And then you gotta go get somebody to market this or take it yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So how's that process play out? Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a strange thing, especially because, you know, we're not on a label or anything like that. So all the decisions are ours. Um, so originally, yeah, they're digital files. And then we it's up to us to send that to someone who can actually print them on albums or or vinyls. Um, there's also the um, art artwork. So Aaron Bishop, who's also from here, who's Jordan's like childhood friend from high school. Amazing digital artist. Uh, he makes all of our artwork um so yeah he created the, what the cd would look like he created the outside you know all that stuff any any of our posters um just all the branding basically is him so it's a lot of different pieces but then you have an album and then you're like now i have to sell it like how how do i do this um and and really the only way is to tour i really i really believe that you know the local stores can sell it and yes that's very helpful but in order to get it to a mass audience, you just you have to 
bring it to them. You have to show them that you have it and you have to show them who you are. So it's a lot of touring. So tell me about touring. What's that like? Touring is fun. Um, it can be a little bit lonely. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I think now that the pandemic's over, we have a new appreciation for the road. Um, Jordan has always loved it. He just wants to go, 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 go all the time. Um, what is it like? Uh, you know, at first it was a little bit, it was hard. You know, you're not getting very many people out. You feel like nobody likes your music. Um, am I going to be able to continue to do this? I think that's that's the one thing that I try to tell new artists in Newfoundland too. So you can't base your career off one or even two, maybe even three tours. Um, you're probably not going to make your money back. And I think that's the scary thing. It's an investment in your business. Um, but yeah, you just have to keep pushing through. You meet new people, so many crazy you know, stories. Um, most of them good, but some of them you're like, nah, I probably won't be going back there. <laughs> <laughs> Not playing there again. Um, but yeah, no, overall it's just, it's, it's, so, it's so great just to, to find people that really connect with your music and, and want to, I, I love getting to know people. I'm a pretty social person, so I, I just, I don't know, I like to meet new people. Where have your tours taken you so far? Uh, we've been basically across Canada now, which is awesome. We did like a Home Roots tour that brought us to like um, Alberta and a couple of shows in BC. Uh, we went to Nashville and did Americana Fest, which wow. was a crazy experience for us. Um, we have been to Germany, but it was for a private event for a family member, but it was still just so cool to be there and play. Um, we've been to, where else have we been? I feel like there's definitely more. Mostly Canada. We really, we really want to expand now. Like this summer, there's so many different festivals that we're doing all across the west coast of Canada. Um, and then after that, we just need to, just to make that leap and, and get out more. So you're out there, you're getting in front of the audience, getting mm -hmm. that music out there. And that's really what it is. That's hard work. This is not, it is. I mean, it is. this is hard work. Right? It is, yeah. Besides just the, the practice and trying to be as good as you possibly can, it's it's hard work to, um, to kind of to connect with an audience, especially if it's a really big audience. I think this is going to be really cool. The festivals that we have coming up are going to be... A, a different ball game altogether, I think, for us. Do you us. do meet and greets uh, after you perform at all? Or? We have done, yeah. yeah, we have done. Like, um, it depends. So for a while there, we were doing more, um, like, home concerts. So that was awesome because it was, like, super intimate and you're basically in someone's living room and you're yeah. playing to 50 people and then you just all chat afterwards. And, you know, um, so that's really cool. But yeah, at the festivals we have, we did one in Grand Prairie. We did um, Bear Creek Festival, and we did have a little meet and greet after that. That was really cool. Uh, and people actually came over. <laughs> so I was like, oh my gosh, you actually want us to sign your CD? That's so nice. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a nice experience, yeah. When you were in, uh, I want to take you back to Nashville for mm -hmm. a second. Yeah, there's a lot of talent in so Nashville, much. right? Yeah. When you were walking down, I guess, Broadway there, the main street, and you think of yourself, wow, I'm here. Yeah, it's it's like a daunting thing and then also an excitement because we, well, for, for Americana Fest, you're, you're, you know, you're going for some of these like big, big, big name artists that are going to be performing. Um, but yeah, if you just walk down the streets and you hear just, it could be anyone just singing and they're all fantastic. And there's so much talent there that it's like, it just makes you wonder because you're like, oh my gosh, like, not that they're, like, how come they're not as big as the ones that we're going to see at this festival? You know what I mean? Like, there's just, it's just incredibly, it's just incredible to see all the talent. But How did you get to that festival? Is there a little story there or what? Um, yeah. So, uh, Tamara Cater, who is awesome, um, she was putting together a no case. So, basically, there's a bunch of showcases for Americana Fest. And sometimes people will try to create their own outside of it at a bar close by so that they might get people just who are attending the festival to come see theirs. Um, so she created this this um, no case and she wanted us to do it. And we knew it was gonna cost a lot of money to go, but we were like, this is, we need to do it. It's a, it's a experience. 
And by the time we went, they had actually incorporated it into the festival. They liked the lineup and they wanted it. Wow. So, really? How cool is yeah, that? it was really, really cool. So, yeah, it was nice. We got to play, play at the Station Inn, which is like iconic place um, to play. Uh, so that was awesome in itself. Um, and yeah, just to ex experience and like take in all of the all the different musicians. I will say, I, I always thought that Nashville was going to be super scary. Like, I thought it would make us feel like we'd never, ever do it. And once we got there, I kind of felt a little bit of relief. Like, you know, although these people are immensely talented and we have a lot of work to do to get there, it was sort of like, I think we can. Like, you know, we, we connect with this music. Um, I think we can do this as well. So it was a weird, a weird thing, but it was really cool. To, yeah. to have that, yeah. I, I love the way you describe because you're right. You, you walk down that main street in Nashville and every bar and everybody singing, you just stop and you're, you're fascinated by the talent. Yeah. And you were one of the, you're that talent, right? No. <laughs> you're, you're in that mix, right? We'd like to think so, <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah. That's pretty amazing yeah. stuff. What is it about Newfoundland that creates so many talented musicians and it's creativity there's so much good things happening here why is that i wish i knew i i want to say it's in the water i think i think you know most families have music in their bones um you know and and i don't know i don't know why i i have no idea why i'm so happy that it it is like that and i'm so happy that newfoundland can share their stories through music and i think it's the thing that connects everyone the most um but yeah i can't tell you why it, and it, it, to me, it's creativity. Mm -hmm. It's creativity in everything. Yeah. Like you talked about Jordan's friend doing the album cover. Creative mm -hmm. person. It's just yeah. creativity oozes. Business people around here, they're creative in the way they think. And it's a resilience that people have that they're going to succeed. Mm -hmm. It all comes together, doesn't it? Yes. It seems to. I still have to find that... Um that confidence, <laughs> but I'm on my way. <laughs> so tell me, uh, just get back from the ECMA, ECMAs. Tell me yes. about that experience. Oh, uh, I wish I could go back right now. <laughs> um, we barely slept. We were up till like 5 a.m. every night. No, um, it was just a gathering of friends is what it felt like. Um, when we're here in Newfoundland, we feel it too. It's just everyone's very supportive. We're all very uh, happy for each other's wins and sad for each other's losses. and really supportive of each other um, and it's so nice to see that the whole East Coast is like that and we have so many friends from PEI and Nova Scotia who feel the same you know they came to our showcases we went to theirs always like pumping each other up and just being because it's not a competition you know we're all very different even if it's the same kind of genre we're, we're all really different so that's my favorite part of these teammates is just like the family and the community of it um, seeing everyone we haven't seen in couple years uh, I mean we we won an ECMA <laughs> that was incredible and I still feel like it's a little bit surreal um, but at the end of the day it was to gather it was mm -hmm. my favorite part yeah tell me about the ECMA you won we won contemporary roots uh, recording of the year um, and yeah we were up we were up for three we we're up for album of the year and I think group of the year as well and uh, we didn't have anything prepared for a speech, which is typical of us. We really have to stop doing that because we never <laughs> think that we're going to win. So we're like, nah, we won't win anything. Um, but but yeah, I was terrified to go up there and, and talk to people. But yeah, we just did a little speech. We also performed, which was my favorite part of it, to be honest with you. When I found out about the uh, nominations, I was excited. But when I found out we were playing, I almost cried. I was so happy to be asked to play one, the award show. One song, show. two songs? One song. How do you pick that one song? Uh, well, they're usually, they're usually um, you, you know, they usually say, please choose something that's, you know, uplifting or right. have, has a bit of energy. You know, you always get someone who sings a ballad, but mm. overall they want, you know, some energy, um, something that most people might know. So I think it was it was it was a given that hope would be the choice because that was our first single off this album. Um, it made the most impact, and I think after the pandemic, 
being hopeful is really is really the message. So, so you're on stage, you're at the ECMAs performing. Mm -hmm. well, there's some talent out in the audience. So much talent. You're yeah. nervous, but you yes. must feel powerful. Like what is tell us what it feels like um, to perform like that cuz I'll never get that experience. <laughs> it's it, yeah, it's like this it's a jittery um, excitement especially to share the stage with the people that we really wanted to. Like Chris Kirby was there who's like our main collaborator so to have him on the stage with us too was fantastic like share that experience I've with him i've seen him perform and it is electric I, right yeah. he can play just about any instrument uh just uh, this piano i've yeah. never seen a guy play a piano like i don't wow. know if you've seen him alan oh my lord yeah he's really really talented so that was really cool he doesn't sit down much though does he no <laughs> <laughs> no he has a lot of energy that's for sure um yeah i don't i don't know it's 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 strange to see so many people in the audience. You have to really not think about the fact right. like of who they are yeah, because yeah. otherwise you're going to completely <laughs> psych yourself out. Yeah. Um, but no, it was just this high. I, I can't even explain like when you're done, done something like that. Yeah. Is I was, there any footage of that particular performance? There is. And now that I watch it back, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can tell I was more nervous than I even thought I was. Right. But, but you can also see the, the joy and the excitement in everyone's face on the stage. So... It's really cool to still have that, to be able to watch it back. Maybe I'll get my hands on a little bit, and if it can, yeah. intersperse it. Mm -hmm. That would be incredible. Yeah. So, um, what's over the horizon for you? Where do you want to? Where do you want to take this? Where do we want to go? Um, we've we've really um, built our team more. You know, we have a booking agent who's amazing um, from iBook shows and even over the pandemic, they've been doing the most they possibly can for us. Um, so we have. I think six festivals in a row. Um, Va uh, Vancouver Island. Uh, what part of Vancouver music. Island? Um, it's in Com Com Comox? Comox? Yeah. yeah. Alan and I are Navy guys. We know oh, that no area way. very well. Yeah. I've never been to BC in my, except for those two shows that we played, um, but never like in Vancouver. And so that's going to be cool. Beautiful, but beautiful place. Yeah, we have Vancouver Island and then Van Vancouver Folk Fest. Um, there's like Canmore and Mission. Um, we're doing Grand Prairie again. And we're doing Lunenburg in between. So we have to like fly and fly then fly back. back. Yeah. yeah, we actually have Trails, Tales and Tunes coming up not not too long um, and Iceberg Alley. So there's a bunch. And then after that, I think, you know, moving out a bit more is, is kind of the thing. We would love to go to the UK. I think that that is a huge goal for us. Right. Um, just from what we've he heard of people's appreciation for music over there as well. And, you know, they don't mind if they don't know the band. There's very curated um, audiences for music and they trust the venues to bring in, you know, music. So hopefully, Hopefully we do that. I would love to go to the States too. I'll go anywhere. Well, first to mind <laughs> anywhere. a question though, yeah. on the business side of this, mm -hmm. you know, do you have a sense of pockets of where your audiences are? Is that something that you know, or are you working towards finding that out? I think a bit of both. I think a bit of both, especially, you know, in Canada, we're pretty good now on the East coast. We sort of understand where we should go and where we shouldn't. Um, but the West coast of Canada is all up in the air for us. I think the festivals will help a lot because you get so many different people watching, um, that you wouldn't normally come together probably. Right. Um, so that's a really great audience builder. So that's going to be like amazing for us. Um, uh, yeah, and anywhere outside of that, it's really just us looking at other artists and trying to figure out, you know, what they're doing and what works and what doesn't. And we have a lot of contacts that we can ask, and they're more than happy to, to help. So, It sounds like a very, well, I, I know it is, right? The, the whole musical community, they're very collaborative. They want to mm -hmm. see people thrive, right? They do, and they Jerry do. and I often use the term that a rising tide floats all boats. And I think the music community is that. It's they want to see people collaborate and work together and everybody do well. Yeah. But I think, Alan, on that note, you know, uh, Music NL, I've been around the advertising world in St. John's for many years under Rhonda's leadership. It seems to me that Music NL is really starting to be a more cohesive unit. Some of the board members with business backgrounds and all that, the fact mm -hmm. that we're here having this conversation with you, it excites me mm -hmm. uh, to be in front of musicians and uh, the, 
the juxtaposition, I said this to Dwayne Andrews, of music and business. Mm -hmm. It's a really important thing. And, it uh, is. You guys seem like you're really getting it together with the various aspects of your business, you know. Yeah. It is a business. It is. It right? is a business. And I, th I think Newfoundland has so much talent, but it, it did for a long time lack that business side. Mm -hmm. And the people who could commit to being managers and booking agents. And, you know, even artists here still need to have full-time jobs. Um, which is understandable because there's not always so much income. Um, but yeah, I think the building of the business side here is only like the, is the next step and needs to happen. And I think we're on the right track. Are you totally on your own with the music music or is there something else you're doing? I'm, you I am on my own. Jordan right now is working a little bit on the side. Um, you know, mostly because of the pandemic, we yeah, were, right. we were on a traje trajectory of being able to really do music full time and, and make it work um, so we're really we think now especially with all of the things that we have set up and every all of the excitement that's happening um, that we are on our way to being right. yeah and there's an appetite right for people yes. there's an appetite for more and more and more yeah so you're probably in the right place at the right time and and hopefully you get throughout Europe and all and, and everywhere so. and that's going to be fantastic for you so okay yeah from you know on the street in Conception Bay South doing uh, lip syncing you know <laughs> uh, through vet school putting your hand inside that cow uh -huh. uh, <laughs> can you stop to, win, bringing that up? to winning an ECMA uh -huh. uh, what mm -hmm. piece of advice would you give somebody oh I think it's just to keep trying um, I know I said earlier about people just being afraid to make that investment and it's understandable I mean I'm gonna be 30 in like a few days and I still live with my grandmother <laughs> so that's not the ideal situation for most people at 30 and that's not what they expect their life to be um, but it can be hard to be able to have you know the house and the car and the kids and do this career it's not impossible it just may take longer than you think and um, and yeah, I think just keep keep trying and keep meeting people and keep connecting and you will find your audience because because people like all kinds of music. So, Jerry? Well, I was 29 before I moved out uh, and I told that unfortunately to my 14 year old who reminds me every day. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, yeah, you didn't move out. Uh, yeah. Listen, things <laughs> happen at the right time. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can tell you from our experience Many years on from you, uh, you have an incredible foundation, and it's obvious that you're quite open to the future. And I, I am, I'm, I'm excited for you. All thank of those you. festivals. I wish I could get on a plane and go watch you. You know. <laughs> yeah. So 100%. thank you for being here today. It's been an absolute pleasure, particularly around the creative process. Yeah. Another podcast. We'll delve more <laughs> into that. Well, thank, you, so thank much. you very much for the wonderful conversation and especially for the kind of uh, the behind the scenes look <laughs> at what it takes to create an album and and the like. And congratulations on your ECMA. Thank uh, you. you should be very proud. We're very proud. Newfoundland and Labrador is very proud of you for sure. Uh, what another great conversation on Gale Force Winds and uh, it's such a privilege to be in uh, conversation with creative people that are doing great things making the world a better place one song at a time and I think it's just great and a big shout out to the parrot uh, who is a big <laughs> part of the conversation Monty uh, <laughs> you'll get free my friend you'll get free eventually <laughs> so thank you very much for joining us here at Gale Force Winds and I'll tell you this the world needs more Kirsten Rodden Clark thank you thank you